In this video, we're going to look at the law of conservation of momentum. Now, when an object's moving, it has momentum, and similar to with energy, momentum is neither created nor destroyed. The total momentum before an event is always going to equal the total momentum after an event if we assume that there have been no losses from the system. So what we've got here is we've got vehicle one traveling from left to right at a velocity of 55 kilometers per hour and vehicle two is stationary. We've also got the masses of the two vehicles. Vehicle one has a mass of 1450 kilograms and vehicle two has a mass of 1125 kilograms. Now what we want to know is if vehicle one drives into vehicle two, which is stationary, and they become coupled, meaning they join together, what will be the final velocity of the two vehicles when coupled together? Now momentum is just mass times velocity. So vehicle one, prior to the collision, is going to have a momentum of m1 times u1, its mass times its velocity. And in theory, vehicle two would have a momentum of m2 times u2. But we have just said that vehicle two is stationary, so m2 times zero will just be zero. That term's gonna disappear in this first instance. Now the momentum before the collision is going to equal the momentum after the collision. Well, if these two vehicles couple, then the mass is going to be the combined mass or the sum of the two masses. And the velocity that they're gonna be traveling at, we're going to call V for final velocity. So there's our statement for the conservation of momentum. Now, before we input any numbers, you'll notice that the velocity of vehicle one prior to the collision is given in kilometers per hour. And we know that we need to work in meters per second. So it's a good opportunity to remind ourselves of the conversion because if we want to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, we're converting both the distance and the time variable there. So we're going to go via meters per hour. Well, if something's traveling at 55 kilometers in an hour, then it's going to be traveling at 55,000 meters per hour because there's a thousand meters in every kilometer. And if something's traveling at 55,000 meters every hour, then to find out how many meters it's traveling per second, we need to divide that by 3600, zero, zero, which is the number of seconds in an hour. Now where that 3600 zero, zero comes from is we divide by 60 to get from hours to minutes, and then we divide by 60 again to get from minutes to seconds. So here we have 55,000 divided by 3600, zero, which is 15.278 meters per second. Now, personally, I find those box trails to be very useful, but otherwise you could just apply the conversion factor of times a thousand over 3600. Zero, zero. You have a choice. Either way, the initial velocity of vehicle one is 15.278 meters per second. So if we return to our calculation in the top right, we've got M1, U1. Well, M1 is 1450, and U1 in meters per second is 15.278. We've already said that M2, U2 is zero because U2 is zero. And our combined mass, M1 plus M2, is 1450 plus 1125. The two masses over here added together. Well, 1450 plus 1125 is 2575. And that's multiplied by our final velocity. So hopefully you can see that the only operation we need to do here to get V on its own is to divide each side by 2575. So divide 2575 each side and we'll be left with V equals 1450 times 
which is the momentum before the collision, divided by the combined mass of 2575, giving us a velocity of the two vehicles moving off together of 8.603 meters per second. Let's look at another example then. So this time, both vehicles one and vehicle two are moving, and they're moving in the same direction. But as vehicle one is traveling at 75 kilometers per hour, and vehicle two is only traveling at 22 kilometers per hour, eventually vehicle one is going to collide into the back of vehicle two. Now once again, they're going to couple, and they're going to move off with a common velocity. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert each of our velocities into meters per second. And this time we'll use our conversion factor, so times 1000 over 3600. And we'll do that for both of our velocities in kilometers per hour. Doing that for our first velocity gives u1 equal to 20.833 meters per second. And doing that for velocity 2 gives us 6.111 meters per second. So now we've got our two velocities. If we move over to the right hand side, we know that the momentum before the collision, which is the momentum of vehicle 1 plus the momentum of vehicle 2, equals the momentum after the collision, which is the combined mass times the common velocity. So to get V on its own, all I need to do to each side is divide by this bracket here, M1 plus M2. So V equals M1 U1 plus M2 U2, all divided by open brackets M1 plus M2. It's important to note that all of this is on top of the fraction, so we should also put that into a bracket. So we can input our numbers now. V equals M1 U1. Well, M1 is 1450. U1 in meters per second is 20.833. And to that we need to add M2, which is 1125, times U2, which is 6.111. And all of that needs to be divided by our combined mass. 1450 plus 1125. Well, multiplying that out gives us a final combined velocity V of 14.401 meters per second. And let's just check if that's what we would expect. Well, we have a final combined velocity of 14.4 meters per second. Vehicle one was originally traveling faster than that at 20.8 meters per second but vehicle two was traveling much slower at 6.11 meters per second. Therefore, we would expect the combined velocity to fall somewhere between those two values, which it does in this instance. Now we're going to look at one more final example, and this time two vehicles are traveling towards each other. So this time we have two vehicles traveling towards each other. We have vehicle one with a mass 1450 kilograms, but we've introduced a new vehicle, a much larger vehicle, with a mass of 2,770 kilograms. Vehicle 1 is travelling at 85 kilometres per hour, which we're going to need to convert to metres per second. And vehicle 3, as it's being called, is travelling at 70 kilometres per hour. Once again, we'll need to convert that into metres per second. So our U1 then, 85 times 1,000 over 3,600, is 23.611 meters per second. And our U3, the initial velocity of the larger vehicle, is 70 times 1,000 over 3,600, and that comes out to be 19.444 meters per second. So now we can write our equation for the conservation of momentum. Vehicle one has a momentum, of M1 U1. And vehicle 3 has a momentum of M3 U3. But here's the important thing this time. The momentum of the two vehicles is in opposing directions. 
And this is because velocity is a vector. So if we assume that vehicle one is traveling in the positive direction, then its momentum will be positive. But vehicle three then is traveling in the negative direction. So its momentum is going to be negative. So we need to subtract the momentum of vehicle three from the momentum of vehicle one to find the final momentum. Now the rest of the process is the same. The combined mass is still going to be M1, M3 when the two vehicles collide and couple together. And they're still going to travel off with a common velocity V. But we'll just have to take a little bit of care to make sure we know which direction the final velocity of the combined vehicles is in. Now once again, we'll get V on its own by dividing by the combined mass. So V equals M1U1 minus M3U3, all divided by M1 plus M3. And so inputting our numbers, we get V equals 1450 times U1, 23 0.611 and here's where we need to be careful minus m3 which is our larger mass 2770 times its velocity u3 19.444 and all of that is divided by our combined mass of 1450 plus 2770 the masses we still add together because we're looking for the combined mass whereas the momentum of vehicle 3 is subtracted from the momentum of vehicle 1 because they're travelling in different directions. Now when we run the numbers on that, we get a final velocity equal to minus 4.650 metres per second. So what that's telling us is the two vehicles, when coupled together, are travelling with a velocity of 4.65 metres per second, but the direction of travel is going to be in our negative direction, or right to left. So basically what's happened is the momentum from vehicle three has overpowered the momentum from vehicle one, and the two vehicles are traveling from right to left.